Okay boys and girls, welcome back to the AutoWit tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna cover loops, and as I've promised in previous videos, we haven't got far to go before we get on to the interesting and cool stuff, working with browsers and all that good stuff. But also, as I've said previously, learning this stuff is really good. One, for the uh, actual stuff that we're gonna move on to do with the browser automation, but also for programming in general. Um, programming languages use a lot of the same um, things such as loops that we, we covered and if statements and all this kind of stuff. They do have a slightly different context, okay, the way that they're written out. However, they're used in all programming languages. So this will carry you forward um, if you decide to go into other programming languages like JavaScript or Python and so on and so forth. So it's really good to pick up these basics. Okay, with that being said, I'm just going to hit you with some shameless plugs and then we'll get on with the contact, content of today's video. If you haven't already done so, check out the Bot Empire membership. The link is in the description. There are so many perks to join and it's unbelievable, including access to the support channel so you can ask questions related to AutoWit or Browser Automation Studio or JavaScript and I will answer your questions and help you out within 24 hours. There's also access to the bot vault that has scripts and videos and even compiled bots like the Reddit bot and all this kind of good stuff that you're able to take apart and work with yourself. Anyway, there's loads and loads of perks. Check out the link and it will give you a list of everything that you get for becoming a member of the bot empire. Also, if you haven't already checked out the AutoWit course, link is in the description. Check that bad boy out. And uh, yeah, that's more advanced. Obviously, I teach you a lot in the, the YouTube videos, but if you want to get down and dirty with AutoWit uh, and get to the secret source and all the, uh, all the more advanced techniques, then check out the course. In fact, all the good stuff, all the links are in the description. After you watch this video, check it out. Okay, now let's roll on with today's content. So loops, 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 loops. I want to go through three different types of loops today. There is a couple of others, but these three will be used in 99% of the cases that you come across, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write out each one of the loops, and after I've written it out, I'm gonna explain to you what they do, how, why, and all that good stuff. So the first one that we're gonna crack on with is called a while loop, okay? So what we want is, as usual, we wanna include our, and we're gonna include our, um, our me sorry, our message box, our message box uh, function, so we can access all the good stuff for the message boxes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable, and we're going to call that, mm, we can call it what we want, but we're going to call it our number for this demonstration, and we're going to set that to zero. Okay, and like I said, I'm going to walk you through this afterwards. Okay, so then I'm going to start the loop. I'm going to say while our number, and then we'll say under or equal to ten. Okay, then we're going to say message box. And we are then going to say, um, what do we want? Want our flag at zero. And then we're going to, for this one, we could give it a title, but we can leave it blank as well. And then we're going to say, um, we could just say for inside, we could say the value, probably want to do it correct though, the value of, and then, our number is, and then we're going to close. We're going to close this up, and then we're going to leave a gap, and so it concatenates, and then we're going to put our number. Why have I got two? What have I done? It's different. Our number. No, I want it in. Um, where did I put it? Different. Ah. Okay. There you go, our number. And then after that, I'm gonna close this up and then I'm gonna say our number and then equals, uh, yeah, equals our number plus one and then I'm gonna end the loop. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this works before I walk you through this. Okay, so the value of our number is zero. The value of our number is one. The value of our number is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so what's going on here? 
So we're including being able to use the functions of the message box. We're making a local, we're opening a variable, we're creating a variable, and we've called it our number, and we've set that equal to zero. So this variable holds the number zero. And we've put while our number is under or equal to 10, okay, do this. And when you start, when you type while and then the variable and then the, uh, what it needs to be like under or equal to 10, when you press enter, it will put put it inside like this. So, so you can see uh, what's inside. It's going to tab for you so that you'll know that you're inside the loop and you can see here with the red. Okay. And then we said message box, flag zero. We didn't give it a title, we could have. And then inside the message box, we put the value of our number, this, va this variable is, and then a plus sign, and then a gap, and then our number, the variable. Okay, so this holds zero on the first run. Okay, then we've put, after we've done this message box, we put, okay, so our number, so this variable that equals zero equals, our number so our number equals zero plus one okay and then it's going to go here and say while our number is less or equal to 10 okay so what is it now so it's added one so this is now one so it's going to run through this again this will be one it's going to run through it again this will be two this will be free because it's adding one every time that it gets here. And then when it looks at this and evaluates it, and then it's not under, then it's going to stop and break out. Now, one thing I want to tell you with while loops, you need to make sure you include this. It needs to add or subtract or do something so that at some point it hits the uh, value to be able to break out of this loop. Otherwise, you're going to have a continuous loop your computer is going to cry, break down. You're going to have to buy uh, counselling. It's going to be a nightmare. Okay, so make sure that this doesn't become an endless loop. That's why we include this. Okay, so let's run this. So it's zero because we started off with zero. So it's still under under ten. Okay, so this is zero. So then it's going to add one. And it's going to evaluate this again. Is it under ten? Yeah. So it's going to go again, and then it's two, and it's going to carry on until it gets to 10, and then it's going to break out and finish. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's a while loop. And by the way, when I'm explaining these loops to you, and you might be thinking, how is this going to be used in bots and browser automation? You'll get them light bulb moments as we go through this tutorial series. You'll see, and you'll go, ah, oh, now I understand why I was taught that. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so that's a while loop. So I'm going to keep this include message box because we're going to use this for all three of the loops. The next one that I want to show you is similar in some ways, but it's used in different situations, and that's called a for loop. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to type it out, and then I'll explain to you what it does, why, and all that good stuff. So we say for. So we start the loop. Well, put the parameters first. So again, we'll call it our number. So for our number, then we'll say equals five, and then two, zero. Hold on a minute. Two, two, zero. Okay. And then we're going to use step. So when you start uh, typing these in, it will help you. Like it will know that it will go straight to step, and then step minus one. Okay. And then you see it indents for you like before, so you know you're inside the loop. And then again, we'll get our old faithful message box. And we'll do zero, and then we're going to do for a title. We'll say this time we'll give it a title. Why not for loop? And we're going to do it properly for loop. And then we're going to say, um, what, uh, what do we need to say? We need to say. Well, say what we want, but uh, let's do countdown, standard countdown, and then add, and then we're going to use a macro that I did a previous, there's a video about this that's in the tutorial se series that I did a couple of days ago, so check that out. I'll explain it anyway in a sec. Um, it's CL, oh dear, come on, 
it's uh, C R F. Okay, and then and our number. So it's up, and then we use the next. Okay, and then when it's broken out, and I will explain this to you in a second, so don't worry if you're like, what is this crazy guy doing? Um, or loop. Okay, just type it nice and slow in case you're following along. You can always pause it just so you can see. So we're going to say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And then, oh, yeah, we've got to close that up like so. Boom. Now, before I explain, let's see if it works. Need to, I didn't quit the last one, naughty. Right. Do, 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 do. Um, tools. Okay. So countdown zero. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. A few corrections here. Goodness, it's getting late. That's that's the excuse I'm going to use. Countdown five. Countdown four. Countdown three. Countdown two. Countdown one. Countdown zero. And then yeah, woo. Okay, so what's going on here? So we've got our message box functions that we can use, and then we're saying for our number. So we, we're, we're using, we're creating a variable on the fly. We can do that with this. So for our number equals five. So inside this variable is five. And then we're saying two zero. Okay. So we're going, in other words, in English, go from five to zero. And for each step, so each time you go through this for loop, minus one. Okay. So this is five, okay, and we want to do this until this is zero. And for each step, so when it does this to this, then minus one. So this is five, it will do this command, and next, so then this is four, and then three. And for each one, the only thing that's getting changed is here, the variable, okay? So, because this variable equals five, and then it equals four, you see, and then three, two, one, zero. And then once it's finished, once this has been met, then it'll break out of the loop. So then we do a message box and we put inside it, woo, yeah, woo, okay? So that is a for, uh, a for loop, okay? It also, this could be changed around. It doesn't have to be this way. This uh, could be, for instance, we could do zero to five. Okay, and we could do this to instead of zero, we could do plus one. Okay, let's run this. And now, okay, we would want to change that from count down to count up. But zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and then it breaks out once this condition is met and says, Yeah, woo. The last thing I want to mention about this is the and is a um. Uh, to concatenate and this we've done a video on these before for macros this macro means a new line so you can include this anywhere in your scripts wherever you put this well it's used when you're doing strings and text obviously um, you can um, create a new line just by putting this in okay that's one of the macros that are available if you check out the video on macros there's a link in that description that uh, gives you a list of all the macros available Okay, so that's the for loop. Now the last one that I want to run through is a little bit more complicated, okay? But as we go on through this series, it will start to make sense. Uh, this is a for in or for in next loop, okay? And it's used to loop through arrays and through objects. Now we haven't covered objects yet, so I'm not going to show you a demonstration that includes objects. However, we are going to get onto objects, and once that's covered, then I will include a video that shows you how to loop through objects. But for now, as in this series, we've already covered arrays. I'm going to show you how this could be used to loop through arrays. So we've got our functions for our message box as per usual. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say local. And again, I'm going to just create this 
Uh, I'll do it slow in case you're following along. And then afterwards, I'll run through exactly what's been done and why. So I'm going to put A, the standard uh, demonstration array. And then it's going to be an array that has four slots, so to speak. OK. And then after that, I'm going to say, leave a space so it's quite clear. I'm going to put array. And then it's the one at zero is going to say, um, Auto it mag whoa whoa <laughs> magic. Okay, close that out, and then we're gonna say array, and then slot number one is gonna have what should we put in here? Zero to have a number, and we're gonna get on. Okay, and we'll say two, and that has a stick to numbers, and then we can do again. So we're just filling out the parts of the array with different things, both strings and numbers to mix it up. I don't know, um, the test. <laughs> okay, now, then we're gonna make a variable, another one, another variable, and we're gonna call that string. So we call it S string, S string. Okay, and then in that, we're just gonna put two quotation marks and then this is where the loop starts so we're going to put four and you can call this part anything which will be explained in a minute but i'm going to call it the element okay and then say in and then in the array and then oops at string equals at string <laughs> and then um do I need a gap? Yeah, we need the gap, the element. And then we're going to use a macro so that we get a new line. Uh, yeah, we need a new line now, don't we? Okay, and then we're going to do next. Next. And after that, so again, don't worry. Once I've written this out, this will become clear what I'm doing and why. And then we'll do four in. Close that up for the title, and then we're going to use that. Um, and then inside the message box, so we know what we're doing, we're going to just do uh, 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 for in array oops, array test, um, and then close that up, and then put add, and then we need a new line again. We've got the macros for that. Okay, then plus uh, result is same result is here we get at another new line. Um, do we need a new line now? A result in yeah. We are then plus plus the string that we've got. Close that up. Okay, so I forgot this right. Let's see. Oh, I always do that. I didn't stop executing the last one that we did. The test. What did I? Ah, bad, bad boy. Okay. Here we go. Let's try again. Okay, so four in array test. Result is auto magic zero, 1.5, and the test. <laughs> I like the way that I put four in an array test in all different uppercase and lowercase. Anyway, so what's going on here? So if you've seen the previous video, we covered array. So I've made local and then array that has four slots. Uh, so an array and in just about all programming languages, uh, things start at zero. So in array slot, we call it a slot or placeholder zero. We have this string auto magic in place holder one, the number zero. In two, we have 1.5, and then in slot three, so that equals four altogether. It starts at zero. We have the test. Now, we then make a variable called local string, and that holds uh, the quotation marks. And then with this is where the actual loop is. So this is we put four 
and we've made a variable called the element. This could be anything that makes sense to you. This could be changed. Okay, so we're saying for the element in array. Okay, so then we're going to put the string, which is this, just the quotation, equals what's in here plus the element plus new line. Okay, and then it's going to do the next one, next one, next one, and then when it's finished, when there's no more to do, it's going to do a message box for, and then the title is going to be for in, and then inside it's going to say for in plus new line plus the words result is new line and then the string so what does this mean how does this work so this variable gets changed each time we run through the loop so the first time that we run through the loop inside here is auto it magic okay and then that's put into this the variable called string okay that has the quotations and the element which is auto it magic and a new line and then it goes and does the next one so this the element then becomes zero and then does the same so basically it's put it's putting each one of these into a string okay then adding a new line to it uh, to the line and then going on to the next one now once it's got all that information then it's going to open a message box and that message box is called for in and then inside that message box we're printing out for in the array test and then a new line plus um sorry then it's going to concatenate result is new line and then the string which changes every time this runs through okay i know that's a bit of a, a thing to get your head around but this is one of the ways that we uh loop through an array which is going to be used all the time so I press it so you can see for in array test. So this for in array test result is, and the first time that this run, what this was, the string is auto magic. The second time this ran, it was zero, then 1.5, then the test. Okay. So for the element, the element on the first run of this loop is auto magic. Okay. Then the string becomes the string plus the element. So in other words, the string basically becomes, the variable the string basically becomes what this is, plus new line. So then that's why we've got a new line. Okay, then it's gonna go next, and then it comes zero, then 1.5, then the test. And for each one, we we'll put it into a message box. Okay, so practice that, try and get your head around it. I know th this last one uh, is, a bit more difficult the concept is a bit more difficult but practice is the key you'll get that aha moment and it will make sense and it will, if it doesn't make sense to you now don't worry because we'll be using this a lot in different contexts through the course okay um, this going through um, arrays is quite a big part of uh, when you're building bots uh, especially kind of arrays can be used as lists uh, we'll get into all that anyway. So don't worry if you don't fully understand this. Write this out for yourself, okay? Study it, change it up a bit, and then kind of you will get that aha moment, like I said, and especially later on uh, in the course when we start using it practically. Because what I've shown you with these loops is how to make them, okay? And you, you might be sitting there, like I said before, thinking, well, how is this useful when we're doing browser automation and bots? But you will see that each one of these are needed and used a lot. And when you see them in context of, you know, doing something useful, um, then you'll you'll thank me for teaching you. Okay, <laughs> okay, guys, thanks a lot. I know some of this isn't too, um, some of this can be boring, so to speak, but it's stuff that you really need to, to learn. Not not just for auto it, but if you go on and uh, programming different languages and this is stuff kind of the basic stuff that we really need to to use I promise you a couple more videos and we'll be getting on to the fun stuff playing around with browsers and doing all that cool that cool stuff that I'm sure you're here to learn okay guys thanks a lot and I'll catch you in the next video